So, um, I've been working with the web since 94. I was really lucky, or a bit stupid really. My boss turned around to me and said, we're going to train you for the internet. And I said, nah, it's really boring. This is going to be a fad. <laughs> Luckily, it wasn't. And whilst I was there, until I was building computer rooms for them and stuff like that, when we used to have, I don't know, a thousand servers in a room and stuff. Anyhow, uh, currently, today, I look after um, lots of NGOs and other sorts of organizations which get very high visitor numbers. Uh, the one I'm going to talk about in a minute, RNW, gets up to 30 million visitors a month. Um, I'm kind of a full stack kind of guy. I do DevOps, so I play with servers, do tech need, and also CTO, advice for companies. I work with startups and corporates and, well, you name it, just about. But I like to work in the non-profit sector because I like to feel that I'm doing something that's, well, good. I think it's the best way to say it. Um, lead admin on the Facebook group for WordPress hosting, and that's about 10,000 people there. And of course, I'm from Cornwall, you might hear my voice, and I've been here for 18 years, so that means I can speak Dutch. So, as it noted, you can hear for Agent Nederlands doen, maar it's langzamer, and ik ben een beetje doof. So, I work a lot with RW, they're Radio Nederlands World on Group, as it was and they've changed from being uh, the World Service to being a, a charity now, an NGO. And they focus on two major things, and that's uh, Citizen's Voice, which is democracy and good governance. And those guys on the left, they risk their lives, literally risk their lives, by blogging about things they want changed in their respective countries. So Yaga's in Burundi, the poorest place in Africa. Bembere's Mali, Habari is in Congo. The one that's bottom left is actually Libya. Um, then we've got Yemen, that's got the slowest internet in the world. And lastly, China. There's one there for uh, problems with migrant workers and getting uh, sexually assaulted and stuff. So we try and deal with these things. And then on the right is uh, Love Matters, which is a pleasure positive kind of approach to sex and trying people how to teach people how to do it well, how to behave towards your, your partner, and of course all the sexual health things with STDs and whatever, or STIs, if you're Dutch. Okay, so for the next bit of time, think of me as your new CTO, and you are the management team. So you get to ask me questions about anything you can think of, and I just come up with it. And um, please join in, because it's going to help both of us to have a better time. And yes, I will be mentioning companies for our, and showing people's names and faces. I have no affiliation with any of these, so I'm not getting any kickbacks, well, unless they buy me beer later. Okay. Thank you. So, first things first, you do get what you pay for. Um, I'm sure it's got a Dutch one as well. So, <clears throat> what is a hosting provider? It's somebody that looks after the software and the hardware and creates the internet links for you so that you can have your website. They're not necessarily responsible for your themes or plugin, and probably are not, and they might not be responsible for WordPress. So, just a global thing to start with, things to watch out for, is first year pricing. Most uh, hosts offer something that's like cheap, get them in, loss leader, whatever you want to call it, and then they'll ramp it up, maybe two or three times as high the following year. Uh, anybody that promises unlimited anything, um, they're probably lying to you or hiding it somewhere in the terms of service that there's a fair use policy or something. Um, there's always a limit, always. Certain organizations will charge you a lot for SSL. Like they'll, um, yeah, even though if it's free, they'll charge you for Let's, uh, sorry, um, let's Encrypt. Uh, yeah, hidden cost of puddle jumping. That's where you choose a new hosting company every year. You're wasting your time. For the 20 or 30 years you're saving on hosting, you're losing 20, 30 hours to do it. So um, don't bother. Find a good one the first time. And yeah, the biggest thing to watch out for is you really should choose your hosting to be 
near where your client base is. Oh, that's going to be difficult if they're global, but if you can, choose somebody that's local to you. Okay, so who are you? Is there anybody here that's a blogger by trade? No? Good. Business owners? That's most of the people in the room then. Okay, and um, hosting companies? There's one down there as well who's <laughs> hiding. Okay, so we've got a decent cross section. Is there anybody here that, apart from the hosting companies now, that deals in really high numbers of visitors? I mean, I'm talking millions plus. No. Okay, cool. So we'll kind of focus on those a little bit more. The options for you guys. So, first things first, before you buy anything, you make a shopping list. And yeah, there's lots of questions you've got to ask, not just of yourselves and your organization, but maybe of the developer you're working with, and find out as much information about what you need. So, you know, where are your customers? What sort of content do you have? Are you like really image heavy? Are you, I don't know, a video site? Are you a portfolio site for your, for your phot photography? What kind of data space do you need? Do you need e-commerce? All these other questions will help you come down to who you really need. And if you take this shopping list with you to everybody that you're coming into contact with, you're going to make a better choice. It's as simple as that. Okay, so let's start with the free one. This will be for bloggers, so there's nobody in the room. If you just started, yeah, why not just put it on wordpress.com? There's some pros, it's free, it's good. You get to choose your own domain name. But it's really limited for so many different reasons. And of course, they have put advertising on your website. So the advice really is only do it when you're going <coughs> risks. No one else. There isn't anybody that you should, as a business, be creating their website on there. I mean, um, I've done it before just for fun bits. It can be lots of uh, really easy and quick to set up. Okay, cheap shared hosting. There's a lot of organizations, um, companies around the world, who try and sell you the $1 a month hosting. So it's like, I don't know, $12 for the year or something like that. Um, while it's better than the free one that you're going to get from WordPress, really don't do it unless you absolutely have to. Um, it, it, how can they possibly offer that is the question you've got to ask yourself. They must have really cheap employees. They must have really cheap administration systems. They must not bother to upgrade their servers. They must, all these other things, to be able to offer it at that price. It's just logic. You can't, um, you can't pay people, I don't know, 20, 30, 40, 50 dollars an hour to maintain stuff if you're only making 10 cents an hour. So uh, yeah, if you consider the electricity alone for a server might cost more than the, the 12 dollars in a year. So you're not really going to get the best support, you're not going to get anything super with that. And of course, they're going to upsell you whenever possible and that will become a pain in the ass really quickly. However, if you ask Matt, who runs the hosting at um, Namecheap, he'll tell you that they can do it, and they've put a ridiculous amount of uh, technology into it. They've set up Kubernetes and all sorts of other stuff. It's really interesting. There's a link to an Ask Me Anything we did in WordPress hosting, where he tries to describe it all. And yeah, he's willing to offer you something for a year for $12. Still, it has limitations. You only have three gigabytes of data space. Um, Strato, uh, I'd say they're Dutch, they're actually in Germany, I believe. They have Dutch offices. And they will offer you a, a $1 a month hosting. But as we said earlier, the second year pricing, it's $60 or 60 euros a year. So, big jumps. Okay. Um, yeah, target audience. People who don't invest, want to invest in their business. Uh, really basic web presence. So the less said about them, the better. I mean, just don't do it, really. Okay, professional shared hosting. This is where most of you are going to be looking, to be honest. Either shared or we'll come on to the other ones. This is the start of the interesting bits. Thanks. Um, so we have some pros and cons to this. 
usually they offer free SSL with Let's Encrypt. Often there's you know free domain name in the package and quality support staff and good administration tools. Everybody's got a cPanel or something similar or a Plesk. But it also has other problems. I mean, the biggest possibles is this one here. Possible they'll be out of action for a long time because something else on the server, somebody else, somebody else's website, is causing problem with your website. Some companies will put thousands and thousands and thousands of websites onto one server and just try and make it work and that's how they make their profits. And so you've got to try and talk to the agency first, or sorry, to the company first, try and find out how they work. So you find out, will you get screwed if somebody else is, is causing a problem? Now, okay, and you also might not have SSH access. That's um, a secure way of logging into the server. If you're really into technology, you might want that. So have it on your shopping list. Make sure of what you're buying. Oh, and again, of course, the upsell for a fix. Okay, starting price, probably around $20. Um, 15 euros or so. And yeah, it's people that value their stuff. It is suitable for a business, but it's still lower tier. Yeah, if you get like a really high amount of traffic, you, your post goes viral or something, it could just fall out of the water really quickly and the company's telling you that you've got to pay more money or something. So yeah, you might need to work with them if you're doing a marketing plan where you're getting a lot of new visitors. You need to let them know what's going on so that they can maybe create uh, a burst capability. Okay, so here's the usual suspects for uh, the class leading um, web hosts. Now, Histo at the left there, he's done a great AMA. You can also go and have a look at that. He's from SiteGround. They are in the WordPress hosting group probably recommended the most. Next is uh, Flywheel, they also get a lot of recommendations. And Ricks get, also did a lovely AMA. Um, David, I mean, the thing to point out here is all of these people will take the time to speak to you. You don't have to just go and look at what offerings on the website. They'll chat with you for however long is needed just to make sure that you're happy. They want to have good customers just as much as you want to have a good thing. So really try and take the time to do it well and you won't be upset when it comes to that second year or third year or whatever. And then there's Hamlin at the end there uh, for Panthenon. Okay, and we have our WP Engine guy down here who knows everything about hosting ever. Okay, self-managed. So there is um, self-managed VPSs where they're really cheap, virtual private server. It's kind of like a shared server well, shared hosting, in the respect that there's one big server that is chopped up into many pieces and you get a piece of it. So you could still suffer problems when that's done. Okay, anyhow. What do you Oh, you start at $6 with, um, per month with DigitalOcean. That's cheap. Very, very cheap. But you're the one that has to install it, you're the one that has to set it up, you're the one that owns the security, you're the one. And if you don't have time to do that, it's going to be a real pain. And also, if you, of course, if you have lots of customers all on yeah, a real pain. So, yeah, extremely fast. They're in good locations. Um, if you look at DigitalOcean, Linode, or any of the others, they have plenty of locations. You can choose where you want it to be so it's near your customers. But, like I say, you own it, you manage it, you secure it, and ownership takes a lot of time. Uh, and my advice is, unless you're really desperate to save money and are technical, don't do it. Even if you're technical and know what you're doing, consider, consider it twice, because you can probably make more money doing other work than fixing your own websites. Okay, so there's like a bunch of jargony terms, you know, PHP, Varnish, Nginx, Apache, Redis, Memcache, Postfix. If you know them, great, crack, crack on in, have a go. If you don't, don't do it. Okay, so 
The ones on the left are the really cheapy ones. They'll come at the start of like $6, $10 for a month for a thing. The ones on the right are the ones that get expensive and are also much more difficult to understand their product offering. Um, uh, if you're not an expert in, I don't know, AWS, the Amazon Web Services, you can end up spending a lot of money you don't need to spend. So it's really worth considering for any of those ones on the right to try and find an expert to help you if you're going to do that. Um, one of the experts I've worked with before, when I was working with an organization, they, we went through, and was myself and Rackspace did this, where they had, I think there was a 230 line items that we had all going through AWS. Rackspace came in and worked out that only 120 of those were needed. So 110 things were being paid for each month that just didn't need to exist, or could have been you know, moved into one. So really consider getting an expert in if you're gonna go down this route. Okay, and of course, um, to be a proper web host, you've got to have enough people available 24 hours a day to do the support. So that's a minimum of six people every day. And then you've got weekends as well, because you've got, you know, two people for eight hours, three times uh, that every day. It's a lot of people you've got to have. So consider it twice before you jump in there. Okay, and managed VPSs. This is probably the sweet spot at the moment in hosting of where people are making the most advantage of their own money when they're paying for <coughs> hosting. You can grow quite quickly with it. You, uh, you know, you don't have to support it, of course. It's things that have a proven track record. Um, so, for example, a company that is doing managed VPS, they will work out the best platform, the best stack that they can have. So what version of PHP, what version of Redis, what, all these other little bits, and plug them all together for you so you don't have to think twice about it. And they'll also control the, the security, which is a big thing you don't want to be responsible for. Big thing. And, okay, some of them don't offer you SSH access because if you can log in as root, you can break everything. You know, you can't always insta install everything you want. There's an example there, fail to ban, which is a, a thing you can use at PHP level to um, ban people by IP addresses. Um, yeah, and I could say you have to be a bit savvy when making the purchase to spec it out properly. So you still might want to speak to your developer a little bit extra and say, okay, how much memory do I need? How much disk space do I need? What's it going to be in two years time? How big is it going to be? And start to look at things on that level. Okay, Manage starts at about $10 a month. Uh, I think that is Cloudflare and OneCloud are both doing the same thing there. Um, but the big thing to, to recognize is that if you really want to, to um, use this kind of thing, the, the, you're going to have to pay more for support, I think is the, the best way to put it. So even though it's there for $10, if you want to get great cracking support, you're going to pay more money. Um, yeah. It, this is probably where most of you are going to be looking right now. Whereas, yeah, professional level hosting that can grow and you don't have to employ your own support staff. So, the two on the left are very much in their own sort of $10 realm. And the one on the right there, Kinsta, they're on the kind of more $60 a month realm. Okay? Um, both of these, although it was why on my screen? Weird. Master Sam, he's um, done an AMA on the group, so you can have a look at that. And so is RF. So you can also look at that. Um, RunCloud are based in Malaysia. So, yeah, it can be difficult if you want to speak in our time to them. Cloudways are based uh, somewhere in the east in the Arabic countries. I can't remember where exactly. And Kinsta are based out of America. Kinsta give amazing support really will go, go above and beyond. They'll try and look into your, your problems, your, into your theme, into your plugins and whatever. They're not gonna rewrite your code, but they'll tell you where the problem is. And yeah, again, you can find these people on Facebook and you can talk to them and they'll be glad to speak to you. So, recommendation? 
First of all, always check out that the company will do what you want to do. So if your developer has done something special, then you want to know it and you want to talk to them first. And if you want great support, pay for it. <coughs> okay, managed hosting. This is can be on shared, it can be on your own server, but it's just general managed hosting. There's some companies, some in the room, that work in this sphere, then they do it really well. Um, we'll come on to the list of the best ones, well, the class leading ones in a minute. But where they really focus on is providing a platform where you can work and forget about it. It's not that you have to ever think about what's happening on the hosting. So this is a really interesting one for people that maybe had a website designed once and don't want to touch it again in future. It's just needs to work, it needs to be online. Um, most of these will gladly put on WooCommerce and all those sort of other stuff really well. Biggest problem I found with managed hosting is the account management. Often is American time. So if you're looking for the class leading one, you might find yourself having to talk to them at seven o'clock at night. And for me, that's not good. And so I'd rather choose somebody that's more local. Um, the P Engine does have European presence. The guys here have European presence, well, Hilverson presence. Um, there is others, but if you're Panthenon, for example, if you really want to speak to an account manager, it, it's really late at night for us. So, uh, yeah, you've got to really want their, their help to, to be going down that path. Okay, so price. Variable, but always expensive. I think that's just the best way to put it. You pay for what you get. It's for your large business, digital agencies, those who want to be resellers. You want a comprehensive solution that's always going to work, really secure, really, really fast, really great. And yeah, it's where to aim if you already have a successful online presence. If you're already live, if, you've already want to, if you're looking to go that next step up, these are the people to talk to. Okay, and um, Here's a bit of a checklist of all the stuff that they might possibly ask you to be able to join them. I, this is a checklist I had from a combination of WP Engine and True. And they're looking to see how big your databases are, how big your files are. So you might still need somebody technical to go out and find this information for you so you're able to buy the right stuff. Again, it's to save yourself money long term. Rather than looking at well, I can buy the thing for 400 euros a month when you can actually afford. So you might have to pay for the one that's 600 or you might only need the one that's 200. Okay, so if all, uh, WP Engine, is there anybody else? No, unfortunately. Uh, Pagely, uh, Joshua there, he maintains that he invented the managed hosting way of working and everybody else is a copy. Um, the guys down the bottom there, WPX, they say that they will bend over backwards to make anything happen on hosting that you need. So they're an interesting proposition. Surfball, they say that they have the fastest hosting on the planet. So, uh, and they're willing to let you test it at any point in time. Um, I've put in there Kinsta, although they're using the infrastructure of um, other people just because they really do put the time to uh, be, be a managed situation. They're really going to try hard for you and not just for them, unlike some hosts do. Okay, dedicated hosting. This is where you want your own server to yourself and no one else can share it or touch it or whatever. Um, yeah, it's going to be so fast. It's going to be blistering with speed. Um, you're never going to have contention. That's one of the problems with VPSs or with share hosting. That there might be contention for processing or disk or memory or whatever. Some hosts are really good at it and don't have that problem, but some aren't so good. You're going to get good support, and of course you can put as many websites as you want on it. Well, I say as many as you want, obviously, the thousands, then you're going to need more dedicated machines. Um, okay. It's going to get expensive, really expensive, and upgrading can be an absolute pain in the ass. 
for example, if you want to upgrade the memory, the whole system's going to be shut down, somebody's going to take it out of the rack, put some new memory in. If you want a bigger disk, it's the same way if you want to upgrade the processor. So it can be very expensive and time consuming to do that kind of thing. Whereas other types of hosting will take that into account and that they can do the upgrading and work around these problems. Okay, so price variable, <coughs> really expensive. Um, yeah, fast performance of the hardware. If you're into e-commerce, something like that, yeah, it's a good, good choice. This is higher tier, really kind of, you're looking almost enterprise. Uh, I would think if you're doing something like a, a, a successful online anything, this is a really good place to be in. And uh, yeah, of course, like, um, like VPS is, you don't have to use a hosting company in this country, but if you put one in this country and your audience is in the Netherlands, it's going to be faster for the people in the Netherlands. Okay, so, oh yeah, remember to choose one that has support in your prime time. That's a big one. Uh, I was with Paisley a couple of years ago for hosting, and I could never get support during the daytime because they were only working banking hours of America time. So, pain in the ass. Be very careful of that one. Okay, co-location, that's where it's your hardware, somebody else's computer room. I, to be honest with you, it's a really bad deal. You're taking away a lot of the benefits that you could have by having a great hosting company look after everything by slapping your stuff into a computer room. I once made a startup in this country, uh, price-wise, price-wise now it's called, and we did this at the time. We made our own servers and put them there, and the amount of times I had to cycle from one side of Amsterdam to the other to turn on the servers again or to reboot them properly. It was just stupid. So uh, yeah, I mean, they're doing quite well now, price-wise. Um, okay. Yeah, no one's going to support you but yourself, and you're really in control, so it's, a, it's just a bunch of risks, so really don't do it, and I think this is the best thing to say. You don't buy a dog and bark yourself. Uh, I'm sure there's a Dutch translation somewhere, but yeah, you don't want, you don't want to be your own guard dog. Okay, yeah, don't do it. Don't really don't do it. Um, pain, heartache, stress. Uh, yeah, real pain in the ass. And you're, if you're the one that has to go and reboot it, push the button, you're constantly on edge because people could phone you, your pager could go off, your telephone could go crazy at any point in time. Okay, a high performance cluster. This is for the people that get the millions of uh, visitors a month. Um, this is where you're at a different level altogether. You really want to find somebody that you can talk to and get great admi account administration. So they are there at the end of the telephone, but you can also just go around to their offices for a coffee because you're working at the, the high ends. You really want to make sure that you're best mates and you've got the same intentions uh, towards the future in land. It's not about um, just paying somebody money, it's about having a relationship. And this is where You've got to have a good relationship with your account manager, with the hosting company, with your developers, and everybody's got to work together to work at this. It becomes very difficult. The, the difficulties of having a, a cluster of servers to do a job it is exponentially more difficult than having one server doing the job because you have to deal with the way that caching works. You have to think about all these other problems that are just introduced. And so if you're going to be going down this route, you've really got to have friends on all sides. So, if you're finding that your company's not work, your hosting company's not working with you, then yeah, seriously consider moving. Uh, I did this for R and W last year because uh, they were with a hosting company where the account management was taking three weeks to respond from an email, and they were getting paid I don't know how many thousands a month, but it was in the region of forty thousand euros a year for hosting costs. So you would expect somebody would reply. It's not always the case. Because, of course, they're also dealing with companies that will have 80,000, 100,000, 200,000 a year to spend. So, uh, yeah, you can be a small fry in a big pond. Okay, everything gets a price. Service level agreements can be incredibly costly. Uh, if you want somebody to, to fix something in an hour or be on top of it in five minutes, you've got to pay for it. 
and, and that can get big in the way of pricing. Just as big as employing a whole team of people. Okay, so okay, it's going to be around forty thousand dollars. So, like, let's say thirty-six thousand euros a year to get a decent cluster. Um, so that's, that'd be a pair of uh, database servers, a pair of web servers, a pair of varnish, and a pair of load balancers, and have them all singing together and working. And yeah, that will get you up to I don't know, say thirty, forty million visitors a month. No problem at all. Once you get over that, you've got to start looking a little bit differently. Maybe just adding more hardware, maybe having um, different locations. We'll, we can maybe talk about that later if anybody's got questions. Um, like I say, really have somebody that's close enough to visit. The company that I said that we were sending emails to and they weren't responding, they were in the UK, we were in a hill with some problems. So we went and chose somebody in Amsterdam instead. Very simple. Okay, so we actually chose True. Fun to know, and they're the ones that also do Albert High and a bunch of others. If I was going international, I did check up Pantheon, and that's why I say about the account management being American time only. IBM, yeah, they will say they'll do it. Page, do say they'll do it. This other company, Tuxix, are down in Nijmegen. I hope I'm pronouncing their name correctly. I know their workers from interactions and stuff, and they're very clever people. So I would honestly investigate them in future. Um, as an option. They do what they would call mat work, so they'll make whatever you need at whatever scale. So it's an interesting company, but right now I would say True is probably one of the bigger ones in the Netherlands. Okay, hosting purely for developers, for people like me, Pantheon, Flywheel and WP Engine are all providing lots and lots of tools so that it's really good for a developer, so we've got staging sites and all those other kind of capabilities. Flywheel's invested a lot of money in having a capability for developers to develop locally on a machine much better. WP Engine, I believe, does stuff like that, maybe in the future. Um, yeah, um, okay, and in the Netherlands, TransIP gets a lot of positive press. I've never worked with them myself, but a lot of people say they're very good. True, I've been genuinely pleased, and these guys are in the front, almost in the front row also are apparently very good with the developers because they come well uh, well if i read the stuff that erland there writes it's clear that they're able to talk on a technical level to other people so that's a good company i would say sorry i'm bigging you up too much i'll stop that okay um resellers yeah these all offer extra tools to do reselling in better ways than the ones on the left there so Flywheel has like an agency type thing where you can work out all the costings for all of the, the separate people. Pantheon does something similar. SiteGround also, WP Engine does also. So you can work out from all of these ones on the left how your different things that you're reselling are doing and how much they're taking up of the space. Ones on the right, TransIP I'm told are really good. I've never used them as I say. And the guys at Favida that are in the hallway, you can talk to them about it. They are not really providing many tools, but what they do do is force a situation where they're forcing you to resell properly uh, and preventing you from, if your company goes out of business, that your customers are screwed. That's their kind of viewpoint. They're going to try and maintain that the endpoint customer is always catered for, no matter what. Now, personally, I'd never be a reseller again. I've done it before, and I find it just an absolute pain in the ass because you've got so much to do. You're constantly the one stuck in the middle. And for me personally, if I was going to go forward again and start mm, trying to connect up hosting agency, hosting companies and, and people, I probably would go down the, um, the affiliate route and try and make money that way. So um, more or less every hosting company has an affiliate option. Uh, and yeah, uh, I would ask WP Engine, but they seem to be taken you guys, you've got an affiliate thing going on? The program and the video thing, yeah. And am I right in thinking that once you get somebody gets in, you pay the affiliate returns year on year? Or is it just a... It's a one-time thing. One-time thing. Um, recurring is for partners. So I think it's 20% every month. 
we did the building, so yeah. we'll have to actually do that for, for uh, building and uh, yeah. Yeah. you make money even though you forget to build your clients. Which is and that's the great thing about the opening. Yeah. That's the thing, if you're the reseller, you control all that administrative tasks and if you're just an affiliate partner, you don't have to deal with that. And I think that's an absolute benefit. Um, one of the guys we had do an AMA, he's um, a gold affiliate for SiteGround and he turns over around about $150,000 on recommendation only. So, yeah. If you want to look him up, Online Media Masters is, uh, is Tom. And uh, yeah, he... Sorry. Yeah, uh, and so yeah, if you want to look him up, you can see what he's doing. He makes very long, detailed posts, makes great recommendations, people click through, and you, he makes money. I could say 150k a year. WooCommerce Focus, there's only two that absolutely say they're WooCommerce Focused at the moment, and that's Serpo, who have a, an offering, and Liquid Web, who have what, an offering. All the other companies I've, read, I've said today will do WooCommerce, but they're not saying they're focused on it. It's like, it will work. But these guys say they they've really focused in on it. Okay, um, just some cleanup. Which server should I choose? Apache, Nginx, or Lightspeed? To be honest, it doesn't really matter. But if you choose Apache, you're probably going to have less problems if you're the one actually having to maintain it. Nginx, it's the new kid on the block that's taken over. But all of the old development has all been done against Apache. All the testing, all that HD access stuff, it's all Apache. Nginx is, gives greater visitor <coughs> numbers so you get more bang for your buck. Uh, Lightspeed, some people love it, but I would say that it's no better than the other two, and the other two are free. Okay, really small common questions. Should I buy my domain name from my host? Nope, no, nope, because they can hold you to ransom. Uh, had it. Should you have email on your server? No. Definitely not, because it can become an absolute nightmare. Yeah, there's four or five different ones that are really good. SendGrid, uh, Mandrill, Mailgun, you name it, there's others that will send emails for you. And they have a better um, capability than you to make sure it gets delivered, because all of their sending servers have been recognized for a much longer time. Should I get an SSL certificate from my host? Well, I'm gonna say yeah, because Otherwise, you have to go and get all sorts of things sorted out from them, go and do all sorts of man-in-the-middle bullshit that you don't want to be involved in. So just let them do it. Should I buy a CDN, a host with a CDN? Uh, maybe. We'll come on to that a bit more in a minute. And should I use a, a web application firewall? Yeah, anything you can do to increase security is a good thing. Okay, CDNs. Uh, why use it? It reduces the overall traffic because your static files, your images go from another thing. Uh, and yeah, hopefully it puts the bits and bytes closer to the user. Not always true. Possibility of added security, like Cloudflare puts um, their IP address and doesn't show your, your server's IP address, so it's harder to be here. Possible better DNS, uh, but you've always got to check where your customers are. For example, I was with Pagely before, RNW has a global customer base and they only had CDN for America. Point as part of the process. You need to look somewhere else. And yeah, sometimes a CDN can slow things down. If you, oh, sorry, you're two minutes. Um, if your customers are in, let's say, Amsterdam and your CDN's in Germany, then clearly if your hosting was also in the Netherlands, it'd be faster to just go back to your hosting. Okay, anybody here deal with China? Then I shall skip this one, because it's uh, quite involved. Quickly, GDPR. Um, Everybody's got to have a processing agreement. Make sure that you understand it. Uh, I personally set up my time to forget for when somebody asks to be removed to be the equal of the backup retention period. Also, consider where you host, because the NSA can touch you if you're anywhere in America. So that can be a problem if you're an NGO that goes against governments. Avoid EIG uh, companies. There's a full list. Uh, just avoid them. Um, American dumpster fire, as they like to call it. Uh, they have a very uh, long history of buying good companies, taking away all of their funding, not upgrading anything, and having very poor support. 
And they do this time and time again. But they're a billion dollar company, so they keep on buying up more and more and more. Okay, thanks for listening. Uh, you can find me on WordPress, or in Facebook, there's the hosting group. You can always come and join and ask questions. You're always welcome. There's a written version, a long form version of the presentation that you can read at any time. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me now or after the presentation over a coffee. Thank you. Okay, any questions? I'm sure we can do a minute or two. All right. Good. <laughs> if not, uh, a few minutes between now and the next one. So Perfect. stretch your legs.